Polar bears have become the favorite poster animal for extinctions due to climate change. But they're not alone. An accelerated rate of species extinction isn't just all part of Mother Nature's plan. It's an expected result of climate change. And with changes in the Arctic happening faster than any other place on Earth, polar species are among those most at risk. One of the world's leading polar experts, Dr. David Barber of the University of Manitoba, explained the dynamic at a recent conference in Norway. I like to think of sea ice like a tropical rainforest, and I've said this quite a few times, and it, it's very simply that it controls heat, it controls light, and it controls momentum. And a lot of you work on other individual elements of this and how the ice works like the trees would in a tropical rainforest. If we go down and we cut all those trees down, the public all realize that it's going to affect the ecosystem. But if you tell them that sea ice is disappearing at the rate it's disappearing, they go, so what's going to happen to the ecosystem? Well, it's the same thing. The same thing is going to happen because the ecosystem is so adapted to take advantage of the presence and timing of the sea ice. People used to ask me, do you ever see anything in the environment that you can say has really changed under climate change? And I say, well, you're going to have to talk to the to the, to the natives in Barrow. They're the ones that have seen, you know, the winds and the weather, and they have good experience for that. But when I started seeing when walrus come on the beach and the numbers that I've seen recently, that's when I said, wait a minute, this is, this is different. Well, when the walrus is feeding, you know, they go down to the, dive down to the bottom of the sea and they use their whiskers. While they're diving, those whiskers are moving in the sand. So when they find clams, they use their tusks to dig them out. Basically, they use their tusks for just about anything. You know, bull walruses, they use their tusks for fighting. Even for uh, getting up on ice, they have their tusks you know, coming up out of the water and they put their tusks, you know, ram them right in the ice and they, while they're climbing up, they pull themselves up. Apart from the walrus herd, a female shelters her new prize. It's her newborn calf, sporting an old man's mustache. Why mothers leave the herd to give birth is a mystery. Perhaps to get away from the herd's collective smell, which attracts predators. Perhaps to keep her baby away from the jostling of giants. He weighs 100 pounds to her 1,500. Sensitive whiskers memorize each other's face. Two weeks later, the walrus mother still keeps her calf apart from the herd. Nursing greedily, he's packing on a pound and a half a day. Still, she frequently hugs her baby. In these tactile creatures, contact and reassurance go hand in hand. It will be a while before she lets him beyond her reach. Signs of distress on walrus populations were detected by a team of biologists from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute making observations in 2004 from the icebreaker USS Healy. The scientists made unexpected observations of abandoned walrus pups swimming alone far from shore in the Arctic Ocean. Lone walrus calves far from shore had not been described before in the literature. One scientist said, we were on station for 24 hours, and the calves would be swimming around us crying. We couldn't rescue them. 
Their findings, published in 2006, gave some further details. Our widespread observations of walrus calf separations, which to our knowledge have not been reported previously, indicate that the Pacific walrus population may be ill-adapted to rapid seasonal sea ice retreat off Arctic continental shelves. Because the ice is so far offshore, it's now in very, very deep water. There's no way that the walrus can dive down to the bottom of the ocean anymore because the ice itself is in very, very deep water. So that's necessitated them to actually come to shore to rest. And because in the process, they're having to go to shallower waters to feed, but now they're much farther away from the ice pack. And so they say, do I swim back to the ice pack to rest or do I swim to shore? The Pacific walrus, who normally rest on ice sheets floating out in the sea, have instead hauled out by the thousands at Point Lay to nap. Unable to find refuge even on a small piece of sea ice, the scientists say most of it has melted early. What this is telling us is that there's a continuing pattern of sea ice loss uh, in the Arctic. We may be looking at summers with no sea ice at all, uh, or little to speak of, uh, in 20 or perhaps 30 years. Walruses need that ice to rest on in between feeding. Much like the polar bear, they can't swim forever. We suspect it's going to cost walrus more to make a living when they have to commute uh, from a coastal resting spot out to the foraging grounds than what it would cost them simply to roll off the ice uh, and feed directly beneath them. When walruses crowd together in huge groups on shore, the slightest disturbance from a bear, a dog, or the sound of a boat can cause a stampede. In recent years, hundreds of cows and pups have been trampled to death in such events. Having all of these walrus come ashore, um, there's some debate, I guess, whether that's a new phenomena or not. Um, there's not a lot of historical data in this part of Russia. We know as the sea ice is pulled back from radio telemetry data, tagged walrus, that walrus are abandoning the sea ice as it gets out into the deep Arctic Ocean. And wal walrus are now coming ashore both along the Chukotka coast and the Alaska Chukchi Sea coast in huge numbers and in places they've never been seen before. Now Cape Van Karam here around us, these walrus have been here for a long time. Uh, Raikapi, where we just came from, the walrus there are in much larger numbers, we believe, than they have been in the past. And that's a problem for the walrus in that they're limited in how far off they can forage for food, especially females and young. They can only swim so far. So if you have 20,000 walrus all trying to find food in one area, you can see that it won't take long before that area doesn't have enough food to support that many walrus anymore. We're really seeing an Arctic in the midst of a very rapid change, and right now uh, there seems to be no signs that it's stopping. You think the walrus will be able to adapt? I hope so. What if they can't? We're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs>